Jewelers. I'll be taking you Agricultural Science SS2. This work is being taught according to the Nigerian Educational Research and Development Council, NERDC curriculum. And first, I'll be talking about the benefits of studying Agricultural Science. One, it gives you awareness of crops and animals in your environment. Then it helps you to know the benefits of your crops and animals and how you can improve their yield to maximize your income. Also, it teaches you how to take care of your livestock and crop, that is hygiene and cleanliness, prevention and control of diseases. Another benefit is that you get to know your crop and animals, which can help you get a new stream of income. Next, the courses you can study with agriculture. First, you have agricultural education. You have a lot of them. Agricultural economics and extension. Agricultural extension and rural management. You have plant breeding and seed genetics, crop protection, pasture and range management, animal production and health, Animal breeding and genetics, we have quite a number, a lot that you can learn with agriculture, a lot of courses that you can do with your agricultural sciences. Now, the available jobs that are we agree. You can be an agriculturist and educationist in that field, teaching others. You can be an extension person that you get information from the lab, what you have done in the lab, then you go to give it to the farmers who are the ones that really put it into practicality. Then you can be a plant breeder and seed genetist. You can do a lot, a lot, a whole lot with agriculture. Now, for the purpose of this class, the SS2 Agri class, this is a breakdown of the subjects and we have seven teams. So I'll just tell you the breakdown of the courses. Team 1, which is agricultural ecology. Under that will be learning plant nutrients and nutrient cycle, irrigation, drainage, agricultural pollution. Then for the second team, this is agricultural engineering. And under that will be learning farm surveying and planning. Then the third team, that is forestry. Under that will be learning forest management, agroforestry practices, in Nigeria. Then for the thing four, we we'll, that we're talking about ornamental plants. I'll be talking about floriculture. You get to know what that means in the course of the class. Then for the fifth thing, that is crop protection. Under that you learn diseases and pests of crops, weeds and weed control. Then thing six, we have that is animal science, and under that we're talking about types and classification of farm animals, anatomy and physiology of farm animals animal reproduction, environmental physiology, livestock management, animal nutrition, rangeland management. And for the last thing, that is thing seven, which is agricultural economics and extension. And under that, we're talking about basic economic principles, factors of production, principle of demand and supply, functions and problems of a farm manager. So that is the cost breakdown. Now, let's get to work. Plant nutrients and nutrient cycle. Plant nutrients are basically divided into two the macronutrients and the micronutrients. Macronutrients are mineral elements that are required by crops in large quantity. That is why you call it macro, large quantity. Example of macronutrients we have nitrogen, we have phosphorus, we have potassium, magnesium, calcium, and sulfur. Those are the major elements or the macro elements that plants need in large quantity. Then for the micronutrients or what we call the trace elements, they are minerals or mineral elements that are required by crop in very small quantity. An example of micro elements, we have zinc, we have copper, we have boron, molybdenum, iron, chlorine and manganese. So those are the categories of plant nutrients, macro elements and micro elements. Now, for each of these elements, we'll be looking at the function. Why is it macro? Why is it micro? What does it do? Then when it is absent or it is in excess, what effects does it have on your crops? And the first we'll be looking at is nitrogen. 
the functions of nitrogen. First, it aids plant growth and reproduction because it has an essential constituent of all protein. It is an essential constituent of all protein, nitrogen. So that is how important it is. And it is a macro element. It also increases the size of grain in cereals or carbohydrate synthesis. It promotes vegetative and short system growth. Excess nitrogen delays maturation and fruiting. When you have nitrogen in excess in your, on your farmland, the crops, are, their maturity is delayed. Then fruiting is also delayed when you have excess nitrogen. Then nitrogen promotes chlorophyll formation or deep green color of leaves. You know, chlorophyll is responsible for that color, the green color of the leaves. So it promotes chlorophyll formation. Then it is necessary for synthesis of plant hormones, enzymes, and auxins. What are the deficiency symptoms of nitrogen? When you don't have nitrogen, or it's very, very little, since the macro element. Number one is that the plant has stunted growth. It doesn't grow normally. It doesn't grow at the desired rate. It's a bit retarded. Then next is the yellowing of leaves, or what we call chlorosis. You know, nitrogen is responsible for the formation of chlorophyll, or it promotes chlorophyll formation. So that green color will not be there. That is why there is chlorosis resulting in the absence of nitrogen. Then the leaves of the plants that grow in the soil that lacks nitrogen tends to drop. Then there is poor formation of fruits and flowers in such plants. Now the next element is phosphorus. The functions of phosphorus. It aids enzyme reaction. Then it's a constituent of cell nucleus and essential for cell division. You see it's also very, very essential. Cell is the basic of life. It's the functional unit of life. So if cell division is not effective, then there is nothing else that we're talking about in plant. That is how important phosphorus is. Also, it increases crop resistance to diseases. It helps the plants to resist disease attack. Then it helps in ripening of fruits. It helps in root development, seed germination, fruit formation, and maturity. It also aids seed germination. It aids fruit formation and maturity. Then it improves the good taste of forages and vegetables. So it's a very, very important element in the soil. And the deficiency symptoms include logging, which you will find in cereal crops. Then the leaves turn to purple. And brownish coloration from the seed backward. Also, stunted growth is noted in plants that grow in, in soils that lack phosphorus. Then, inhibition of flowering, fruits, and seed formation is also evident. Then, we have poor root formation or poor root development. Then, immature fruits drop. The fruits will drop when the plants or the fruits are not fully matured. So, that will lead to wastage because the fruit is not ready to be used or taken by the time it is dropping. That is immature fruit drop. Then the next element is potassium. What are the functions of potassium? It is an important constituent of plant tissues. It aids the synthesis of carbohydrates. It activates various plant enzyme reactions. Then it promotes development of young plants. It is necessary for neutralization of organic acids in plants. Then it is associated with stomata movement and therefore influences water relationship within the plant. I said earlier that it's a major constituent of the plant tissue. Then it helps in nitrate uptake from the soil. Look at that. Potassium helping in uptake of nitrate from the soil. Now, the deficiency symptoms of potassium. First, the stems of the plants growing in a soil that lacks potassium will have weak and slender stem. Then their growth will also be delayed. There will be premature loss of leaves. Then there will be brown color at the margin of the leaves. The next macro element that is calcium. The functions of calcium. It strengthens plant cell wall with calcium pectins. Then it helps in the translocation and storage of carbohydrates. 
and protein into seeds and tubers. Calcium controls the toxicity of aluminum, manganese, and sodium ions. Then it is also necessary for normal growth of root sticks. Calcium strengthens plant cell walls. It helps in eye flocculation, that is, good aeration, water infiltration, and water retention. Calcium also improves the pH of the soil so that nitrogen fixation can be carried out. What are the deficiency symptoms of calcium? One, it causes stunting of the root system. And when the root is affected, you know, the whole plant is going gradually. Then they are, they, you will find the appearance of yellow, of a pale yellow color in the leaves. Then the, the plants are of weak stem. The, the, weak, the plants are slender and they are very weak. Now to magnesium, another element. The importance of magnesium, first, it is...